the really big problem that the world had, which is how do, I, how do I share a Photoshop file? How do I share an InDesign file? How do I share an Illustrator file with someone that doesn't have the product? It's impossible. If I'm using Photoshop and I wanted to share it with yourself, you would need to go out and buy Photoshop to open it. Okay? Not so moving forward. So if your content is in the cloud and you share it, this lovely lady here, if I shared it with her, okay, all she needs is a web browser to see my image. Okay? So if I have a 20 meg, 20 meg Photoshop file in the cloud storage, she just opens up her web browser, gets a web preview of the Photoshop file. Not only that, you can look at the colors, you can toggle on and off all the layers, and you can also provide feedback as well. Really cool. Customers get really excited about that because one of the challenges that our customers have had, and it's you know, broken a lot of workflow, workflows, is I've got a native Photoshop file, I can't share it with anyone. Fixed in Creative Cloud. Okay? Publishing. Um, this is really cool. Okay? I haven't met any customer that does not want to have an iPad app. Does everyone here want to have an iPad app if they don't have one already? Okay? Everyone I've spoke to does. So we just didn't want to be about content creation. We wanted to help you publish it as well. So with Creative Cloud, you get access to Business Catalyst, which was an acquisition we made quite some time ago now. And basically what Business Catalyst do is they're web hosting companies. Okay, so every Creative Cloud member gets five websites with up to 100 meg of um, storage on the website. Okay, so you can post your content to those websites. Um, it's great. So what I'm finding is customers are looking at what they're, what they're paying for their web hosting, bringing down their costs, because if they're Creative Cloud members, they don't need to pay web hosting anymore. They could potentially just use ours, because it's complementary in Creative Cloud. But more importantly, what I'm finding is customers are using it for proof of concepts. Okay, promotional websites. And I know we've got a lot of students here. Okay, so you could create your content, post it straight up to Business Catalyst, and you have a fully public website. Okay, really cool. Um, the next thing is around iPad apps. So I love this. Adobe's been so smart here. Okay, so who uses InDesign here? I know someone uses InDesign. You guys just don't want to raise your hands. Okay, so InDesign, thank you. InDesign is the page layout king. Anyone that wants to create a professional annual report, brochure, magazine, they would use InDesign. Okay, so what we did is we sort of said, hey, all of these guys are using InDesign to create printed collateral. What we'd love to do is we think that you want to get that printed collateral onto the iPad. So why don't we make that nice and easy for you? We're not going to release a new product that you have to learn. We're going to keep you in the same familiar environment that you're used to and give you a few new menu items. Okay, and I have a wonderful story from New Zealand, a company called Wallace Cotton. They make bedding in Manchester, okay? Beautiful bedding, and Colin's going to show you this app. And they'd always wanted an iPad app, but they said to me, it's going to be expensive. It's going to cost me a lot of money. I'm going to have to hire someone. I'm going to have to outsource it. And with just four hours of training, a standard InDesign user, they spent four hours learning about how to use InDesign to create iPad apps. They had a fully working iPad app. On the, on the App Store. Okay, they were able to create this without having to go external, without having to buy anything. Okay, so they bought Creative Cloud and they had everything they need beside the Adobe uh, Apple Developer ID, which is pretty cheap anyway. Okay, and they put together an online catalog, and Colin will show you that moving forward. Okay, very sexy app. So anyone in the audience that's always wanted to create an iPad app but thought it was hard, you can do it with Creative Cloud okay, really easily. Um, the other thing is Typekit. Anyone heard of Typekit before? That's good. I get to tell you some new stuff. So Typekit is an acquisition, another acquisition we made a while ago. Okay? And what Typekit does is it solves the problem of web fonts. Okay? So Adobe, we have a website, and we'd like to put a really unique font on our website. The challenge in doing that is when we put that font on our website, you need to have that font installed on your desktop for it to work. Otherwise, what your browser does is it says, here's a font, I don't know what it is, but I'll render it out as Arial, Times New Roman, something quite plain. Okay, so what Typekit does, which is really clever, okay, it sits in between the desktop or the computer and the website, and it says, hey, I know what the author of that website wanted that font to be. Even though it's not on your desktop, we're still going to render that website as the author wanted it to be. Very cool. So if you have a website that you feel a particular font would represent your brand, brand a lot better, Typekit is a great product, okay? And it comes in Creative Cloud. But we're also going to take it a step further. 
All right, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to release something which I understand could, has the potential to revolutionize the publishing world. Okay? We're going to take it a step further. We're releasing a product called Typekit Desktop. And what we've done is we've gone out to all the font foundries and we've said, hey, you know, we know our customers would love your fonts. What sort of an arrangement could we have here? Okay, so with Typekit Desktop, at launch in the next couple of weeks, you'll get 700 fonts that you can use commercially as part of your Creative Cloud membership. Okay? You don't have to pay for them. Okay? All you need to do is open up your account, bring the font down, and you can pull it down on your desktop and use it. Okay? Now, if you were to buy these fonts outright, because fonts are expensive, it would cost you 20,000 US to buy these fonts. But as part of your Creative Cloud membership with Adobe, you'll be immediately able to access them and are able to use them commercially in your environment. Customers are very excited about this. I have customers that are coming to me buying Creative Cloud just for that. They don't even care about all the apps or any of that. They've just said, these fonts, really important to us. It takes me a lot of time to make sure we're compliant with fonts and that my users are creating content that is properly licensed. But also, we spend a lot of money on fonts. Okay, so some customers are coming to me and saying, I've heard about this type of desktop. When's it coming out? Because we'll buy a Creative Cloud just for that. Okay? All right, moving along here. Inspiration. So new products and updates. As I said earlier, we're not the company anymore that's going to do 18 to 24-month big releases anymore. Okay? So take a look at our track record so far. You may say, oh, Brent, what sort of updates are you going to do? You know, I've heard vendors say they're going to do updates before and they never deliver. But take a look at this. These are the updates that we've delivered to customers in our first 12 months of Creative Cloud. Okay? These have been, been big updates. So this is the one I love the best. Okay? So we launched Creative Cloud in May, and our CEO woke up one day, and he said, you know what? I reckon our customers would love Lightroom. So customers that bought their Creative Cloud membership in May woke up in June, and they just got Lightroom. They didn't have to pay any more for it. Okay? They got a $200 US product, complimentary, as part of their cloud membership. Okay? And that's what you can expect as a Creative Cloud member new features, new products, new services, just from being a member with us, okay? All right, moving along. Um, as I said, we wanted to better support customers as well. So we want to just give you new releases and say it's all up to you. So what we've done as well is we've partnered with three professional training providers, and what they do is that we deliver exclusive training content to our customers, okay? So there's a couple of hundred videos up there right now. You can look at it by Photoshop. You can look at it by Workflow. And you can actually learn about all the new stuff, okay? Don't have to pay for it. It's part of your Creative Cloud membership. We're also going to bring something else in the Creative Cloud for Teams option that you can, you can look, if, look at if you're an organization, is expert support. Expert support is great because if you've ever wanted to reach out to a product expert for Adobe, how do you do it, okay? When we have these roadshows in the Philippines, our presenters afterwards get mobbed. Okay, so they finish their presentation, and then afterwards, people attend deep around the stage. Because finally, someone's in the Philippines that actually understands how to use the products, and they want to ask them questions. How do I do this? How do I do that? Okay? Finally, we're going to give our customers access to product gurus, people that know how to use the products. Not about serial numbers or anything like that. Give access to customers with serial, um, you know, actual product questions. All right? So you don't have to... Um, you don't have to um, be on hold for three hours or anything like that. Okay, you schedule them online, and then you have a half an hour session. So every Creative Cloud member, membership that you buy, each user gets two of these. Two 30-minute sessions per year with an Adobe product expert. Customers that I've been speaking to have been loving that because they've always wanted to be able to reach out to someone when they've got a tricky question. Okay? Creative Cloud members now can. Okay? IT and purchasing decision makers. IT loves Creative Cloud. And I haven't spoken to any IT manager so far that doesn't say to me, Brent, this is going to change my world. Okay, so I'm not sure if we have anyone in the audience today that has to manage the software licensing for their organization. So I won't go too much into it today. But the way that the Teams-based version of Creative Cloud works is that you have an admin console, a website. And basically, you put the usernames of the users that you'd like to have the software, and that's your job done. You don't have to worry about who's got what anymore because... This is your one source of truth from Adobe. So if you have 10 memberships, you put in the 10 email addresses and away you go. Okay, it's great. Breath of fresh air. 
I don't care if you install Creative Cloud on every single desktop in your organization because only the people in this console will be able to get access to the content, will be able to use the software. Okay? Very cool. Um, you also get with Creative Cloud the ability to control it. So if you have anyone in the audience today that um, wants to be able to control the applications in their environment, we have an application called the Creative Cloud Packager. What that allows you to do is centrally deploy it and centrally control the updates so that everyone doesn't have to download the software, download the updates. You can download it once and push it out to all your users, but also you can control the updates. Because some people in IT get angry with me. They say, Brent, you doing monthly updates is going to cause me some problems because I want to test the updates first, make sure they're compatible in my environment. Okay, so this gives IT the control that they want. Okay? All right, um, this is just some quotes here just saying how much they love the administration side of uh, Creative Cloud for Teams. Okay? But just trust me, if you need to manage the licensing in your organization, 